So um, I guess to kick things off, eight days ago we got a new president. Yeah. Um, and being that this is a future of politics talk, what is going on? <laughs> I think that um, it's easier for me to probably talk about the future of politics a long way into the future than literally the next few days and weeks and months, which obviously are going to be very unpredictable. But um, to be optimistic about the future of politics, I think that um, I would actually try and sum up the future of politics in two words, which are people power. I think that is where everything is going, and that sometimes will take us in directions that will be uncomfortable for some. But I think in the end, uh, what we're seeing with technology and with the spread of information and with tools such as the one that I'm building at our company's Crowdpack, which are designed to put power directly in people's hands in a way that hasn't been possible before in terms of running for elected office, raising money, organizing, connecting with other people. And I think you're seeing that happen all around the world. And, and so I'm really optimistic about the future, even though I know that there's a lot of people who are very concerned about what's going on right now. So, so what is your background in terms of your involvement in politics and, and Crowdpack and, and the idea behind it? So as you've probably uh, figured out by now, I'm originally from the UK um, and I worked in politics there. Uh, in fact, I worked in the government uh, with David Cameron when he was prime minister. So I was senior advisor in 10 Downing Street and I was responsible for um, basically uh, implementing all our domestic policy agenda. And so that was a good few years ago. I moved to the Bay Area nearly five years ago now. Uh, I taught at Stanford, at the design school at Stanford, the D school, which some of you may know. Um, and just being there gave me the bug for uh, starting things and doing a startup. And I thought I should do that in an area that I knew, which was politics. And that really led me to what I'm doing now. So I'm the co-founder and CEO of Crowdpack. And really, it's a platform for political action. It's a non-partisan. It's for anyone who wants to get involved. We're creating simple tools for political participation, particularly focusing on money. Because in the end, as, as we all know, money is such a big factor in politics. And for so long, it's been the insiders and the big money donors that have controlled politics through money. And that's why my original kind of summary of what Crowdpack was going to be was a crowdfunding platform for politics so that everyone could get involved in funding candidates and causes, not just the insiders who knew where to put their money and how to get things from the political system. So, so speaking on insiders, and how do count campaigns work now on the inside? How do people begin running and how do they get elected? Well, I think that's, that's a really big problem because, and that's why you, I think people are so dissatisfied with politics and feel that politics doesn't represent them and doesn't speak for them because it, it feels like this very weird kind of game that you have to play. And if you're not in it yourself and if you don't know how to do it, it feels really hard to get into it. How do you even start? Um, there's this sense that you've got to raise a lot of money, that you've got to know the right people, that you've got to um, be in some kind of club. And actually, none of that is true. And there are so many elected positions. In America, there's, there's nearly half a million elected positions. There are so many things you could run for if you want to get involved in your community. But it's really hard to figure out where to go, how to do it, what the rules are. And it's all of that that we're trying to make simple. Now, the insiders, they, the party machines and, and the special interests, they understand how the game is played. You know, they, they can afford consultants that can fill out the right paperwork and help them raise money and go to the right meetings, all of that stuff. If you're just a regular citizen, that just feels really hard. And what we're trying to do is make it easy. So, so how does Crowdpack directly influence results of elections? Well, we, we're just getting going. Um, and so it's, it's too early to, to speak of a sort of big effect. But what I'm really excited about is that what I've just been talking about, um, people who are new to politics jumping into races and getting elected, that is actually starting to happen. Um, all over the country. I mean, we did when we, we launched two years ago, and we uh, put a particular when we were sort of testing out our products and the new features we were launching. We tried out some of them in Philadelphia in the local elections there uh, in 2015, so nearly two years ago. 
because it was a off-year election and there wasn't that much going on, we could put a lot of attention on it. And we put it, we worked with some local community organizations who are in touch with people locally and said, look, um, we've got these new tools to help people raise money and get elected. And one of the things that was really great was that um, there was this particular district for the state legislature, the Pennsylvania state legislature. And many people don't realize that actually so many of the things that affect their lives and, and your lives um, are actually decided not, not by the president, not by Congress, not even by your mayor, but by the state legislature. The state legislatures are incredibly important for, for education, for social services, for healthcare. And so, but very few people realize that and very few people actually get involved. So someone there in Pennsylvania, uh, there was a district that had been a safe democratic district for generations. And it had literally been kind of handed down from generation to generation, almost like an inheritance. So the grandfather passed on this seat to his daughter, I think it was, and then the daughter was just about to hand it on to, to her daughter. So three generations in the same family, basically handing on this elected position. And there was never a, a challenger. No one ever ran against them. It was, in, in its own way, completely corrupt and totally undemocratic. Um, but when we, we put out our tools there and started talking about what we could do, one of the features that we've built is the ability to nominate someone. So if you think there's someone, one of your friends or your family, who you think would do a great job, you can easily nominate them. And they can start, and, and people can pledge to them, not donate, but just pledge, and say, well, if they raise enough pledges and then feel they've got the support to run, at that point, your card is charged. So it's a really great way of testing the waters. And there's a guy there who was nominated, he was a teacher, I think, nominated by the kids in his school um, for this seat that has just been completely unavailable to regular people. And this guy was obviously very popular in the, in the community, started getting lots of pledges, took the whole thing seriously, started campaigning, and then before he knew it, had, had raised a ton of money jumped into the race and got elected. It's a brilliant example of a complete outsider getting in, nominated by the kids in his class, and just and upsetting the establishment. And that's what we hope to see all over the country. So, so you, you speak on teachers and community members. What kinds of people are those the types of people that when, when you speak on normal people rather than career politicians? Yeah. Are those the people that CrowdPacker is empowering in their communities? Or, or what kind so. of people do you see on CrowdPacker? I mean, on literally anyone. I mean, I think that that is the whole point of democracy. And, and when we talk about participation, that, that's what we mean, that everyone, there isn't a single person that hasn't got the capacity to get involved somehow. And that you, when you think about running for office, that doesn't, that doesn't mean Congress or something uh, that may seem really off-putting. It could literally be your local council or your school board, all these positions can start you off and, 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 and give you the experience and the taste for it that might lead to greater things. And the other thing to bear in mind is that so many of these elected positions, because people don't know about them, they don't even know that they are elected, they're often like that situation in Pennsylvania, they're uncontested. Around 60% of local elections are never contested. No one ever runs against the candidate um, either in a primary or in the general election. So people just get elected by default because no one ever challenges them. And you saw that a really kind of egregious example of that. I don't know how many people in the audience are, are, are local but may have been aware of a, a really terrible case uh, last year with the sexual assault that happened at, at Stanford. And the judge passed an incredibly lenient sentence. It actually became a national story. Um, and then it turns out that this judge had done that kind of thing many times before. There's a big campaign on now, actually, on CrowdPack to raise the money to get rid of this judge because he's an elected judge. And it turns out that he's been re-elected unopposed. I think it's six times. It's never been challenged. And because of the rules of, I think it's Santa Clara County, if you don't have a challenger, you don't even appear on the ballot. Your name isn't even on the ballot. So you're just elected, as it were, without a single vote being cast. And this person's been in that position, never been challenged. And you can see the outcome in terms of the lack of accountability for the decisions he makes. And so there are so many positions that if, if you just knew about them, you could actually get elected 
with very little money for a campaign. All you need is a network of people in your area. That's what we want to do, really open up the whole system to people who, who've never joined in before but have got a lot to contribute. So would you say that technology, up until this point, politics is, has been uh, largely delegated to call centers and mailers and, and the technological component to getting someone elected has kind of been falling behind. How do you see technology moving politics forward with CrowdPack and, and motivating people that wouldn't necessarily be motivated before well, I just think it, 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 it's just to think about how technology has transformed you know, all our lives and, and given us information and the ability to connect on all sorts of issues. It's, it's not really, it's part of that. It's not a different thing. It's just that, um, it, that that disruptive effect of technology hasn't really hit the political system yet, and that's what we're trying to do. But it's, it's, it's the basic things like, um, like I've just described, like raising money. Now, we've seen how crowdfunding sites like Kickstarter, for example, have just enabled huge, hugely um, ambitious and creative projects to get off the ground that would never have been possible in the, in the old days where you had to kind of do it face to face. Um, uh, same with Facebook, connecting people in different communities around different issues, uh, helping them to organize and mobilize. So I don't think it's, it's that different. It's just applying those tools to this weird thing called politics. And that's why I start off by saying I'm optimistic because I think, funnily enough, this moment where so many people are so energized by what's happened in this election, I think could be the catalyst for that kind of participation. So in, in an ideal future, um, moving forward, what, what do you think politics looks like in terms of getting elected at, and the movements that are being involved? Well, I think one of the big things that I would like to see um, is a breakdown of the party system because I think that one of the things that's been really damaging for politics is that you've had this rigid party system where and I think it's all connected with what we've been talking about in terms of running for office so basically you know everything everyone is put into one of these two boxes Republican or Democrat and that is just so not what people are like in terms of their personal views you may be very uh, liberal on uh, social issues and your attitude to questions like marriage equality, um, but you actually might be on, on, on economic issues very conservative and you may want low taxes and smaller government and, and so on. And, and none of those positions that are kind of an interesting mix of different um, ideological views, they're, they're just not catered for. And funnily enough, I think that is one of the reasons that, that uh, Donald Trump managed to sort of cut through because he just kind of exposed that party system for being pretty bankrupt. Um, and I think that, that that's something I think will happen, and I think that's a good change. I think that if you have more um, independent candidates elected, or even independent-minded candidates within the party structures, I think that means you'll get much more creative uh, policy making and people thinking about solutions that aren't just the the rigid, dogmatic, ideological ideas that we've had for so long. That, true. So I think also a lot of people feel frustrated in the fact that, that they're not sure what to do, how their singular voice could have an impact because of this two-party system and they feel it's bigger than, than one. So what can people like, like the ones in the audience do to invest in, download, follow, to have more of an impact on our political future? Well, I, you know, I would say go to crowdpack.com and start looking at the campaigns that are on there and, and start organizing. And you can start raising money for, uh, you can create your own campaign. It could be for, you could run for office yourself. You could nominate someone. You can uh, find candidates that are on there and, and support them. Or you can, I mean, I'll give you a specific example. It doesn't have to all be about running for office and elections. There's all sorts of other ways to make change happen. One of the campaigns that, that uh, was created on our site, on CrowdPack, just recently, was a bunch of young people in Washington, D.C. raised nearly $50,000 to pay for a physical space that they are using to train uh, resistance uh, organizers who want to fight the Trump regime. They want to come to D.C. and they're going to be trained in techniques uh, of opposing whatever the administration does in their local area. And so what they did was raise money to, to build that physical space, to, to rent a building 
uh, and and be there as a permanent place for training things. So there's all sorts of ways you can be creative about um, making your point or fighting a particular change in your local area. And actually, it often doesn't take that much money. And you can create a fundraising campaign, a crowdfunding campaign on Crowdpack for anything. It doesn't, anything that's political, it doesn't have to be for an election. So if, there's, if you want to organize a protest and you need some money to pay for physical materials or um, whatever it may be, you can do that very easily on Crowdpack. And I think that's a really good practical place to start. Do you think a company like Crowdpack could eventually influence a presidential election? Yes, I really do. I think it'll probably take, um, well, I don't know. I mean, you, you, when, you, when you run a startup, you're both insanely ambitious, but also very uh, realistic about how hard it is to get anything going. But I don't see why not. I mean, if you look at the, the way that things can take off so quickly and spread so quickly, um, I think one thing that would be great would be to see, and I think this will happen one day, an independent candidate raising the kind of money you need to run for president on our side. And actually, I think that what another thing that Trump showed um, with his campaign is that the amount of money is not necessarily as much as people think it is. There are other ways to reach people. Uh, now, he did it because of his celebrity, um, but other people may have different ways of reaching an audience, it doesn't have to be that traditional multi, it's actually over a billion dollars for a conventional presidential campaign, but I think those days may be over. I think it may be much cheaper to get elected. So I think it will happen one day. I hesitate to say 2020 because that really would be an, you know, an amazing breakthrough for us, but look what happened this year or last year. You know, that was pretty staggering. So you never know. Well, thank you so much for uh, for being here. Thank I really you. Really appreciate it, Steve. Thanks, everyone.